Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with KC pianist, composer, and teacher Matt Villinger. This is our second interview with Matt. The first one was right after his move from St. Louis to Kansas City. And now in 2017, he is firmly entrenched in a scene that is getting better all the time. He's using his good work on the keys with Peter Schlamm's Electric Tinks and many other acts, like his good friend Herman Mahari and many others. We probe further into his life as a talented jazz cat in Kansas City and much, much more. So please dig it, my friends. Hey, Matt, thanks for taking some time out. So let's go ahead and start off here, and I'm going to ask you kind of generically, what has been going on with you lately? Well, lately I've just been real busy um, playing different gigs around the city and uh, teaching just a little bit on the side. But um, I've had some regular gigs uh, pop up recently. I'm playing every Wednesday night at the Majestic from 6 to 10, which has been a lot of fun. I love playing downstairs at the Majestic. And um, starting in March, um, I'll be playing every Tuesday night from 10.30 to 2.30 with Gerald Spates Quartet. And um, I've also been playing every Sunday night um, from 6 to 8, just solo piano at the Majestic, which is a lot of fun. Uh, It's fun to work on uh, playing solo piano. And, uh, yeah, I've been doing a couple other things. been still playing with um, Electric Tinks, like you said. Um, That band is probably one of my favorite bands to play with in Kansas City. And... uh, Got some other stuff coming up. Um, getting ready to start a new band. Um, I think it's going to be called the New Transition Quartet with Steve Martin and um, Carl McComas Reichel and John Pizzolermu. So that should be a lot of fun. And yeah, with other random things that pop up too. So, what's going to be the vibe of this band? What's going to be kind of the hallmark sound? Uh, with the uh, new transition quartet? Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, Steve is really into uh, the Coltrane quartet, and so we play a lot of um, a lot of that stuff and kind of that same style. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's kind of that vibe. Cool. And then the gig with Gerald Spates, where's that at? That's at the Green Lady. Okay, sweet. And yeah. then where where are you teaching? I teach uh, out of the school called Meyer Music, and okay. uh, just on a couple days out of the week, and um, just private lessons, mostly beginners. But uh, it's it's nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, th- your last album came out quite a bit back. Is there a new album on the horizon for you? Yeah, I've been trying to write a little, but um, not much has come out. So I'm still working on that and still trying to uh, get some more new tunes together for the next next thing. So Right on. Now, you yeah. mentioned out of all of the things that you're doing, Electric Kinks is one of your favorites. Why is that one of your favorite outfits to be involved with? Well, the musicians in that band are just amazing, and uh, it's always great to play with, you know, better musicians than you, than yourself. And uh, I feel like I'm, like, the weakest link in that band, so it's it's a lot of fun to play with really high-level musicians. And um, the music is a lot of fun. Peter writes amazing music, and uh, um, it's really challenging, so I'm always having to... Uh, work on it and try to get better at it. So, Right on. Yeah, so, it's, it's a lot of fun. Right on. So you you grew up in St. Louis. Talk to me about growing up in St. Louis and how you got into music. Yeah, man. Um, St. Louis is a great city. Um, when I was coming up in St. Louis, let's see, um, there was a really cool session on Saturday nights um, at this place called Spruels, and uh, Willie Akins would play down there with uh, his band, and um, it was great, always great to go down and uh, hear him play. And there's another amazing piano player in St. Louis, uh, Pete Williams, 
I would see him uh coming coming up on Wednesday nights down uh at this place called Riddles. Um so that was always cool to see and uh So let me ask you this, now that you've spent some quality time in Kansas City after you've come from St. Louis, what's the big difference between the music scene in Kansas City versus St. Louis? There are a lot more players out here that are um you know, really trying to set the bar high for the music, you know. So, um, as far as that goes, and the just places to play at, um, there are a few more places to play music at out here in Kansas City, um, as far as jazz goes, and, you know, such as the Majestic, the Green Lady, John Scott has done an amazing job with the green lady um really promoting it right and getting people to come out and supporting um i mean he's just done an amazing job with that and uh, uh the blue room of course and um i think there's some new spots that are opening up soon too um that are going to have music so um yeah and i just started oh also i'm Starting this thing up on Sunday nights at this place called Julep that I've actually I've never been to, but um, that's on Sunday nights from eight thirty to ten thirty with Matt Otto and Carl. It's just like a trio, no drums, but um, Carl McComas rifle on bass. So right on. Fun. So do yeah. you miss St. Louis? I do. I try to get back, you know, every you know as much as possible. But um, it's like I said, it's just been getting so busy for me out here that it's hard to get back so that's a good thing for sure yeah 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 when you were growing up no go ahead no i was just gonna say yeah i do miss st louis it's great it's great to be there yeah so let me ask you this when you were growing up what albums really moved you really got you into that jazz mode man what's the album with dizzy gillespie and sunny sit and they play uh, on the sunny side of the street. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I remember yeah. listening to that as a kid growing up. And uh, the Miles Davis album, Bags Groove, I remember listening to that. That track always, I always, you know, remember listening to that coming up. And uh, of uh, Oscar Peterson's Night Train, I remember hearing that for the first time. Talk to me a little bit about your education. You got your undergrad and master's at Southern Illinois University. What did you learn in a formal environment about jazz and music? Well, I studied with this piano player, um, Reggie Thomas, at SIUE for my first four or five years there. And uh, he taught me a lot of the basics and um, really helped me... uh, get a lot of the basics down for playing jazz and just being able to improvise and um, accompanying. Um, So I was really fortunate to have someone like like him who really, you know, took the time and, um, you know, because not not every teacher will take the time uh, with their students, you know. But I, I feel like he really you know, took the time and really helped me get some stuff together. And um, also while I was there, um, a piano player, Peter Martin, taught there for a little bit. So I got to hang out with him for a little bit and um, study with him. And yeah. Let me ask you this. Now that you're teaching, how has the way you've been taught influenced the way you teach? Um, I really... Uh, try to make the students think for themselves. Um, you know, that was one of the things that Reggie did with me a lot was he would never just flat out tell me, you know, what I need to work on or, you know, he would always be making me think for myself. So I try to do that with my students as well. I don't always give them an answer right away, you know, when they just turn around and look at me, you know, I say, you know, I'm, I really try to make them think for themselves and, and also just trying to, 
go back to the basics and teach, you know, really basic stuff because a lot of the time most beginner students can't do that basic stuff, so it's important to do that. So, Right on. Let me ask you yeah. this. Everyone has their voice. In, in music, there's just mm-hmm. that that that's what you that's what you acquire over time. What is your jazz voice? <laughs> what is my jazz voice? I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, you stumped me on that one. I'm not really sure. You know, I'm just um, you know I listen to you know all the heavy piano players and you know such as McCoy and McCoy Tyner, Chick Corea. Ahmad Jamal, you know, so I try to take all that and, you know, combine it into one thing, you know. Without being specific about your voice, tell me this, what what do you, how do you think you fit in in this Kansas City scene? The voice and the vibe that you bring, how do you believe that blends into the existing Kansas City scene? Yeah, I'm not really sure, you know, I'm just trying to... Um, Definitely just trying to do the best I can, you know. Uh, yeah. So that's all I can really do. Sure. And uh, if uh, if people uh, seem to like it, I think, you know, then that's great. You know, then I think you're doing something right. So. Well, talk to me about the Kansas City scene. You've pointed out some very important things about the scene, but in a more pointed way, me asking you, how do you feel about the Kansas City Jazz scene? You've had some time to bathe in the waters. You've been around, yeah. you've played with a lot of people. What do you think about the Kansas City scene? I think the Kansas City scene is great, and um, there are, like I said, there are a lot of amazing musicians. Um, there's a lot of amazing musicians. Uh, Todd Strait and Bob Bowman, you know, I've those guys have been around for a while and they're very experienced and uh it's really cool to have guys like that in the in the city um you know you can play with them really learn a lot from those guys because they've been around and uh, uh I just played a gig with Todd Strait the other night and you know he he's bringing a lot of music in and uh it's really kicking my butt so um it's great to have guys like that around and um and it's also good to have, you know, the younger guys around, too, who are really serious about it. And also, you know, it's great to have those guys around, too, to push you as well. And um, and uh, at, at, there's a lot of uh, amazing singers in the city. So, um, you know, playing piano with a singer is uh, totally a, a different thing. And uh, trying to do that is... Um, challenging, I feel like. So um, I'm always, it's great to be doing that. And uh, uh, the rhythm section in Kansas City, there, I mean, there's a ton of great drummers and a ton of great bass players. So it's never hard to put put together a rhythm section, um, which is awesome. And uh, and as far as piano players, um, Andrew Ouellette is amazing, and it's always great to hear him. He's always making me want to get back in the shed. And uh, and also Roger Wilder, you know, it's great to hear him. I just heard him play the other day, and he was just playing duo with the singer, and he sounds amazing. So um, it's so great to have, you know, people like that around that are really keep pushing you, you know. Are you always thinking about new music? I mean, we were talking about the new album and just the construction yeah. of music. Yeah? Yeah, I am. I, you know, I I really am. It's just one of those things. I guess, you know, either I need to, you know, really make it a priority to uh, try to write new music every day. But just lately, I, you know, I haven't been doing that. And um, um, it's just, yeah, sometimes it's hard to, crank out new stuff, so I'm kind of in that spot right now. I have a few things, but, you know, like I said, not enough to make a whole new album or anything, but uh, it's getting closer, so hopefully I can keep um, coming up with some new things. But I'm always thinking about it, yeah, so. 
So before we depart the theme of Kansas City, what do you think is the best thing about Kansas City? The best thing about Kansas City, I would say, is um, what we talked about earlier, just the scene in general, the jazz scene and the amount of places to play and the amazing musicians here. I think um, I think that's uh, probably my favorite thing about it. <laughs> What do you think is the future of Kansas City? As good as it is now, what do you see, say, in 10 years from now, five, 10 years from now? What's the Kansas City in the future and beyond? I really would love to see Kansas City um, keep taking off like it is. Um, more places uh, opening up um, to play at, uh, to eat food at, um, you know, there's a lot of great places to eat out here, and um, I really hope that takes off some more um, because I I do enjoy I I do think that people enjoy uh, listening to the music, so that's really cool, and um, I really hope that you know more great musicians move to the city because. Um, I think that would be I think that would be amazing because you know it's, it's always it's always great to have you know more more the merrier so um, and it just you know when better musicians move in in the city that just means you know you gotta make sure you're uh, you're playing is you know at a high enough level you know so. You know, I guess that's kind of a theme here, so to speak, and it's interesting because it used to be Kansas City was kind of a place where once you were done getting your education, you would leave, and it seems like it's a destination point now. Do you feel like that's happening? With you coming from St. Louis here, do you get that feeling that Kansas City is kind of not a jumping point but a destination point? Yeah, I think um, I think so, and I think it's starting – yeah, I think I do because I already noticed a few, you know, other um, musicians move to Kansas City recently. Um, so it's cool, you know. Just recently, you know, some other other guys. All of a sudden, you keep seeing these new faces in the bars and clubs at night, and you're like, "Oh man, who are you?" And you know, they're like, "Oh, I just moved from New York, or I just moved from Denver," you know. So uh, I think you know it's starting. It's starting to uh, to get like that, and uh, I think it'll continue to be like that as long as there's you know places to play out here, and uh, you know that just keeps supporting musicians, and so yeah. So in the local scene. When you got here, who did you play with that was a local person that had stature that you may have been nervous about the first time, that you were just kind of like, wow, I'm playing with this person? <laughs> um, I always felt that way about um, – I always feel that way about playing with Todd Strait um, and Bob Bowman, you know, playing with those guys. Um, you definitely got to be on your your best game. Um, just because they're always sounding amazing. And, you know, they've played with a lot of amazing musicians, so you would definitely want to sign your best with those guys. Um, when I first got out here, Herman Mahari was still living here. So um, getting to play with him, I was, you know, that was the other person where you just always want to try to sound your best around. Um, same thing playing with... Uh, Peter Schlam, he's an amazing musician, and uh, just the same thing. I always want to try to uh, be sounding my best around those guys. So. so let me ask you this. Is there anybody locally that you have not played with that you have a real desire to play with? Let me see. I'm trying to think. Um, you know, I haven't played with Gerald Dunn, and... I know he's an amazing saxophone player, and I would love to play with Gerald sometime. I haven't played with Gerald. Um, some other guys. I just got to play with uh, Marcus Lewis, 
recently for the first time. Yeah. And uh, he uh, did an arrangement of um, my tune, Where to Go, from All Night. And uh, he did an arrangement on that in a big band setting with a big band. And uh, I performed that with him uh, uh, about a week or two ago at the Blue Room. And that was so much fun. And he did an amazing job on it. And uh, just getting to hear his big band and hear all the music that he's arranged um, was really inspiring. And uh, I really had no idea how amazing he was after hearing all that. Um, but he's just a genius. And uh, I love I loved playing with Marcus Lewis. So that was really cool to play with him for the first time recently. And... Um, some other guys, um, you know, I've never played with, uh, I haven't really done anything with Danny Embry, and he's an amazing guitar player, and I would love to play yeah. with him sometime. Absolutely. Um, he tears it up. Every time I see him, he's just yeah. kind of one of those guys that always kind of acts like he's non-assuming, but he gets on that thing, and you're like, my God, you're just, you're blasting that thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, every time. So that's really cool. I've played with this vocalist. I've only played a couple a couple songs with her, but her name is Deborah Brown, and uh, yeah. I would love to play with her some more. Um, yeah. I've never done a real gig with her or anything, so that would be really cool. I would love to try to set something up with her sometime. Um, but yeah, she was definitely one of the best singers I've ever gotten to play with, so that was really cool. Yeah, she's she's got some pipes. I did see a picture of that Marcus Lewis big band, and I wish I could have been there because the Blue Room's already a great place to hear music. I'm sure it's, it's yeah. good to play in. So to hear that big band all together on there had to have just been a cacophony of sound, you know. It was great, and he just writes amazing tunes and amazing arrangements. Man, so that was a treat to hear that. Absolutely. So, and be a part of that. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I bet. So let me ask you this, a generic question. Why do you love jazz? I love jazz. Um, I'm not sure why I love jazz. <laughs> no, I've just, uh, it's just been one of those things. Um, ever since I've, ever since I heard it, I guess I've kind of just always gravitated, gravitated towards it. So, a weird thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I I know. I I I got the bug myself. I understand for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, everyone has a version of who you are: your family, your friends, business associates. But let me ask you this: Who do you think you are when you wake up and face the world and live your life? Who are you? I am just uh, somebody who's trying to um, uh, play music for people. I really want to. Uh, make it make an impression uh, for people when I play. I just really want to, um, you know, bring a positive uh, force, uh, energy to people when I play. Um, I just want to make them feel good, and if I can do that to somebody, uh, then I feel like I've done something good. And yeah. Oh. Right on. That's a great way to wrap everything up. Matt, thanks for taking yeah. some time out. It's great to catch back up with you. I'm looking forward to the new material. I want to I wanna get my hands on it first thing because I can't wait. <laughs> thanks, Joe. Thanks so much for uh, taking the time and, and talking. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in New York, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Matt for his time, his music, and adding punch to the Kansas City scene. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store or visit the neonjazz.blogspot.com for all things Neon Jazz. And you can go to youtube.com and search for Neon Jazz for more interviews. Until next time, enjoy the music, my friends. Thank you all so much for coming. Neon Jazz.